Hello guys, Joel here, bringing you an unboxing, and this is unboxing number 2000, I don't know, I've lost count, but it is number 2223 of first printing of 1500 of Red Rising, the collector's edition, yes, I've got my copy through, um, and I'm really excited about this, I'm actually listening, not reading, I listen to audiobook of Red Rising. I've done Red Rising, good book. I'm now doing the second book, Rising Sun. What am I doing? Not Rising Sun, Golden Sun. Um, and it is just as good as the first. Really enjoying it. That's enough about the books. This is about the board game or the card game, which is designed by Jamie Stegmar and Alex Schmidt. Uh, art is by Jackie Davis, Miles Bensky, and Justin Wong. And it's based on the novels by Pierce Brown. Okay, so if you don't know anything about this, this is a, like a love child of uh, Jamie Stegmar. He's been going on about these books for a long time. Absolutely loves the series and been trying to make a board game on the on the Red Rising um, trilogy. And it's taken a long time, apparently, and several different versions. And he's finally come up with this version. That is meant to be really cool. So you can look on the back here. This is like the components that you get in the game. And then on the side, it's got these names. Now, these names would mean absolutely nothing to you if you haven't listened or read the books. And now looking at the names, I know exactly what most of these people are. There's a couple on here I don't think I've come across yet. But hey, ho, that's just me. So this is the collector's edition. This is ah, really thick. My goodness. Wow. Yeah, that, is, that was bulletproof, that was. Um, so this is a collector's edition, which you can only get by ordering through the uh, Stonemaier website. And Jamie Stegmaier is a brilliant entrepreneurist who set up distributions all around the world to send out games at a really good price. Now I got mine because I am a champion supporter of the Stonemaier Games, which actually gets you a discount off the off of purchases from their site. And um, yeah, and this was actually a really good price, hopefully for what I get. Now, so the uh, the lid is off. Here is the rule book. It is made of that. I, I can't even describe it as paper. It's Oh, it's got that lovely smell. It's got that um, linen feel. It's almost like fabric. And this is how they make all their components. And, uh, yes. Not a big rule book, and that's how Jamie likes it. But um, very good detail, very good illustrations. So hopefully it's going to be good. Then we've got the solo um, rules, the Tull Automania, which basically lets you play the game solo, which I will definitely give a go because I do actually like the way their automator works. So we've got some extra uh, component bags in it. Then we've got the house cards. So you get six houses. So we've got Minerva, we've got Mars, Jupiter, this is falling out nice and lovely, Apollo, Ceres, and Diana. Uh, they mean, probably will mean absolutely nothing to you if you haven't seen the book, but Mars is the most important one. This is the one it's focused around. Okay. So they're the six houses. That people get randomly the board. Okay, looks like not a lot going on. Now, I don't think it is. It's all about card play in this a nice little space here for components I know of. And look at this. This is like becoming an in thing now with board games, with um, a plastic lid to hold everything down. So that's nice right over there. Score sheet. We got player card holders which is a nice little touch six ones in the different colors which is really cool 
We get dice. Look at the size of that dice. I think this is just for randomly giving you a house. I'm sure of. I might be wrong. I don't know. So there is an actual ability to this dice. It's not randomly thing. So each side does a thing. You do it when you take a certain action in the game. This is actually quite cool. Now this is a nice little tray holder for um, a component in there. And actually has a place on the board. So you put that on there and you can put the components in. I do believe it's for these gems. I think this is the helium. That, goes in there. that looks very nice. Does look very nice. And then we've got, oh my goodness, it's heavy because these are actually solid. Oh my goodness, the sound of that solid metal cubes this is like this is the difference you get for that this actually that is some weight in there this will do some damage if you put this if you literally throw these so this is like one color of a player so this to be a color for each player they are quite heavy they're all the same different colors so like so it's going to be a bit hard to distinguish the colors I do believe a slight darker one, blues. So that might be an issue with determining the colour. This is the uh, first player marker, I believe. One marker of some type. Again, solid metal. Wow, that's beautiful. Beautiful. And um, another piece. Oh, this is the first player marker or token, the crescent moon. And this is the sovereign token. And I've got another deck of cards down here. I think this is the Autonoma. Again, quality in the cards is awesome. So yeah, I think this is Autonoma. Very um, simplistic artwork. Not complaining, because there's a, probably a rhyme and reason for it all. But um, yeah, it's very simplistic, very understated. But it will be interesting to see what it plays like because the Autonoma or solo plays on these games is the best in the best. Okay, getting on to some cards. We've got so all these are based on characters you get from the book. Um, some like uh, uh, kind of NPCs as you call them. Just being given like uh, and, um, identities, but they won't be. I don't know if you'll come across it in the game. I've not come across online gambler or Orion. I'm pretty sure I haven't. Maybe I'm uh, not thinking of the right person. Silver, I have come across. Quietus. Um, yeah. Razor designer. I like to see what... So there's a weapon they call called the Razor. And I can't quite visualise it from what I, I read. But I like to see what the... Uh, if there is a, a picture of a Razor, what the um, artist or what Pierce Brown has described it as because they talk about this weapon that they carry around it's almost like a, a trophy weapon like um, a ceremonial weapon in a way that the uh, golds carry around but I don't know it, it sounds really lethal but you've got to have proper training on it ugly Dan he turns up in the beginning and then we've got some reference cards one for each house and I wonder if that's to do with the automate Ultima well, I think this is to do with the autumn as well. But I don't know. Yeah, until I read through the books. And we've got some more cards. I mean, I'm just going to show off the artwork because it looks grand. And even 
just noted on this one. So these are golds. So if you don't know, in this, it's, it's set in the future. We've conquered all the planets in our solar system. And um, we've now got this kind of class regime going on where the top people are called gold because they literally are made of gold down to the bottom people which are reds that work in the most of horrid conditions in the hospitable environments producing and mining for our necessary um, elements to be able to live on these planets um but if you look at this this is a gold character look at this it's got gold embossing down the card now i think this is possibly for the collector's edition but i might be wrong this might be throughout even when you get a um a prop a retail copy that's just antonia yeah uh, ash lord bone riders cassius yeah finchner yeah I can't get over the gold and down this. This is amazing. Unbelievable. Now, Jamie Stegmar has said you do not need to sleeve these cards. And um, because you like shuffle them once at the beginning of the game and that's it. So if you play this game a hundred times and after half shuffling it a hundred times, the deck is being um, well used, let's say, or not in a good way. He would actually said, he actually said this on the live screen, he will replace your cards for you as a gesture of good customer service um, because they like to look after the customers and their components. So, yeah, I like to see people try that. Um, if they do play this a hundred times and their cards are all beaten up, they didn't sleeve it but i hope they are going to sleeve these they look so nice the artwork is just beautiful darrow so Red Labour is the main antagonist of the um, books. So, um, yes, I'm not going to say any more of that. You can read it, but Darrow is the main antagonist. He's a red. So he's the lowest of the low. And if you haven't guessed by the name of it, somehow rises up from being the lowest. Eo is his wife. I mean, this will help me now because I can see these people and that. I don't know if this is what Pierce's branch oh, just dropped one uh, like ideas on what he wanted to see and the um, what his characters were meant to be visualised as. But me seeing these now will help me visualise. There we go then. So that is the unboxing of Red Rising, a um, card, card game board game from Stonemaier Games. And this is a collector's edition. So if you want this version. Um, you have to order it from Stonemaier Games themselves. There will be a retail version coming out, and the only difference is like the components will be less. So, um, I mean, I know it's not going to have this UV, and these are not going to be metal. I think they're going to be wood. Um, you're not going to have the plastic insert that's in here. You, I do believe you get this because uh, it's part of the game, and I don't know if you get these. Um, so, uh, yeah so that's that that's the unboxing thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it if you did enjoy it give it a thumbs up if you do like my videos please support me by um basically subscribing thank you and uh check out my other unboxing videos on the channel and my reviews and podcasts that i do quite regularly thank you for it. thank you very much and good night everyone